We start tonight with your forecast. Thanks for joining us at 11. I'm Nicole Livis. And I'm David Allen. Showers have been passing through the area all night. A look at the radar shows most of it off to the west. 13 News Now Chief Meteorologist Jeff Lawson is tracking the system. And right now, even though there's still some rain on the radar, it's not over, right, Jeff? No, in fact, most of the what we're going to see overnight is going to be in a few hours. We had talked about that earlier, said it would be isolated during the evening and then turn to scattered overnight. So you can see a little bit of rain here across sort of the northern and eastern half, let's say, of the viewing area. Still some moisture down across North Carolina. A lot of this is going to stay west of us, but this is the stuff down near Rocky Mount. You can just see entering the picture that's going to get a little bit closer. Right now, not a whole lot of rain in Williamsburg, but you get up onto the Middle Peninsula, Peninsula, Gloucester and over toward Matthews few heavy pockets of precipitation there, continuing then out into the bay as well, near Mobjack Bay actually and out into the Chesapeake Bay. All of this continuing to move to the north right now. Close to 70, we have dropped to 68 degrees and not much wind out there. The winds are going to shift eventually, but not until the front goes through. So notice over the next couple of hours, the stuff that was near Rocky Mount starts to fill in. A couple of you know moderate downpours every once in a while. We're not going to have flooding or anything like that, but watch out for some ponding on the roadways middle of the night and then even into the early morning. We'll have a few of these leftover showers and then most of the day is going to be rain free. We'll have another chance late in the day that I'll tell you about and then some big temperature swings. That's all when I come back. New information tonight after someone shot into a house in Newport News. It was a close call after a bullet went into the home just feet away from where children were playing video games. Robert Boyd spoke with their shaken mother tonight. Standing outside Samoye Allen's apartment, you can count the bullet holes. One right here through the door, a couple through the wall, one up there through the window. And keep in mind, there were five young children, all 12 years or younger, inside this apartment during the time of the shooting. I don't know what a bomb sound like, but in my sleep, that's kind of like what it sounded like to me. It was very loud. Samoya Allen woke up from her afternoon nap in the living room to find her children in a state of panic. And then my son starts screaming, get up, get up. And they start running around like chickens with their heads cut off and I'm trying to calm them down. Outside, Allen's 36th Street apartment was riddled with bullet holes. One of the bullets entering the front door and landing just inches away from the TV where her seven-year-old, 10-year-old, and 12-year-old were playing video games. So I went out and looked, and everybody was like, they shot your house. And I was like, who shot my house? Nobody knew. I didn't know. Allen said it's tough to explain to children why someone would do this. To me and my kids were on the same page. Only difference is they were crying. I was angry. I don't think my house was targeted. There was no reason to target my house. We don't have any problems with anybody. Brooklyn Johnson was also inside the apartment at the time with two young children of her own, both under the age of two. I'm pissed off that whatever you had going on, you had to take it out on somebody else's home. There's other people around. People just need to put the guns down. So far, there have been no arrests in the case. As for Allen, she doesn't even want to think about how bad this could have been. How does this change you as a mother? It's going to make me more protective of my kids. I wouldn't let them come outside yesterday. In Newport News, Robert Boyd, 13 News Now. Just a block from where Robert was tonight was the shooting we brought you here last night as breaking news. Robert was in the 700 block of 36th Street. Last night, two men were shot in the 800 block. Those two men were taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. They told us at first they didn't know they'd been shot. So far, no one has been arrested. Pride Month takes on a somber tone. This is the anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting. Three years ago, a gunman killed 49 people at a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida. Tonight in Hampton Roads, people gathered in front of the Hoffman Federal Courthouse in downtown Norfolk to pay tribute to the lives lost. 13 News Now reporter Chenu Her takes us there. It's been three years since the Pulse nightclub shooting, and for some locals, it still feels like it just happened. Now add the Virginia Beach shooting and these same locals are saying there's lots of healing that needs to be done. I want you to remember why we're here. Of the 49 faces staring back at Mariella Crespo Williams, 
It hurts, you know. This one in particular speaks to her, the portrait of Brenda Lee Marquez McCool. She still gets the feeling she got on June 12th, 2016, the day her cousin Brenda was killed by a gunman at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, along with 48 others. One of her daughters had texted me to tell me mommy is dead. I cried for a good minute, you know. So every year since, she's joined by other people in Hampton Roads to remember those victims, the organizers. So the Pulse shooting felt very close to our heart. Invited everyone to join them in honoring these victims because they know people like Mariella and others in the LGBTQ community needs the healing still. If people anywhere can be targeted for who they are, then any of us can be targeted for who we are. We are allowed to feel this way. And their grieving this year included a 50th picture. Keith Ryan Cox. One to honor those killed here in Virginia Beach at the Municipal Center. Virginia Beach wasn't just like close to home, it is home. And so we wanted to make sure that those um, people were remembered and honored. Honored and remembered alongside someone Mariella will always love. She was full of music, full of love. And hold close. She died doing something that she loved. She died in a club. She died dancing. She died protecting her son. In Norfolk, she knew her, 13 News Now. Tonight, there are calls for an independent investigation into the shooting at the Municipal Center, and there are those who feel it's just too soon. Kate Nixon was killed that day in Building 2 in Virginia Beach. Her husband told 13 News Now she had concerns about the shooter's job performance and behavior. Jason Nixon says he owes it to his wife to push for the truth. But what I want is it fixed. My wife was a fixer, and I want to fix it for her because she's not here to do that. Now, some city staff say it's premature to make a decision about an independent investigation, but Councilwoman Rosemary Wilson says Virginia Beach needs to be transparent right now for the families and for the public. Having someone independently come in, I, I don't see that there's a problem with, you know, we have to, our folks and the FBI, they've got to do their own investigation, but what's wrong with an independent eyes looking at it? I don't see a problem with that. We have nothing to hide. Wilson also told us an outside investigation would be unprecedented. Today, the U.S. Senate passed a resolution honoring the shooting victims. The measure introduced by Senators Mark Warner and Tim Kaine passed unanimously. It honors the 12 people who were killed and recognizes the efforts of first responders, city officials, and the community. Congresswoman Elaine Lurie introduced a similar resolution in the House. We've learned how Building 2 being closed is affecting some city services now. Many workers are temporarily relocated to Building 19N of the Municipal Center starting Monday. The city encourages everyone to use online services when possible. Other planning department divisions are operating out of remote locations. There is no clear sense of what will become of Building 2 there in the Virginia Beach Municipal Center. We have more information on 13newsnow.com. Tonight, people gathered at King's Grant Baptist Church to support the victims of the shooting. The church held a barbecue for $10 a person with the money going to the United Way Virginia Beach Tragedy Fund. People at the event told us they just wanted to help. And what we're doing today is we're just kind of showing like how we stick together, what we can really do, you know, as a community. And um, I couldn't have done it without, you know, all of them. And um, it just feels really great to be able to, to, to do something and be able to give to these families. Those who attended the event also had a chance to leave encouraging words for anyone affected by the tragedy. There was a bag for emergency personnel, the medical examiner, first responders, and the families of the victims. An update now on the shooting of former Boston Red Sox star David Big Poppy Ortiz. Six suspects are now in custody in the Dominican Republic and authorities are looking for a seventh person. Police released new surveillance video of the incident during a news conference this afternoon. ABC's Maggie Woolley has more on the investigation. Several suspects are now in custody in the shooting of David Ortiz. In a dramatic move, the chief of police holding up the gun that he says was used to try to kill the former Red Sox star. Authorities releasing this surveillance video showing two Hyundais parked in front of each other, one man getting out of one of the cars, a motorcycle nearby. 
Moments later, that motorcycle seen with two men on it driving towards the bar. The gunmen walking up to Big Poppy, shooting him in the back. The shots sending club goers running from their seats. The suspected shooter identified as Rolfi Ferreira Cruz. Authorities saying the group was offered 400,000 pesos, less than $8,000 for coordinated hit on the former Red Sox star. Also in custody, Eddie Feliz Garcia charged as an accomplice to attempted murder. Beloved in his hometown, Ortiz often traveled the dangerous streets of Santo Domingo with little or no security, trusting his fans to protect him. Ortiz is back in Boston and underwent a second surgery. His wife says he is awake, stable, and resting comfortably. She went on to thank his fans and the Boston Red Sox for all of their support, but says now she's asking for privacy. Maggie Rooley, ABC News, New York.